Let's begin tonight with the landmark conviction of Rappler CEO Maria Ressa and researcher Reynaldo Santos Jr. for cyber libel. The Manila court in its verdict says the ruling is not an attack on press freedom. Marlene Alcaide with the story. After eight months of promulgation, the Manila Regional Trial Court Branch 46 handed down a guilty verdict against Rappler CEO Maria Ressa and former Rappler writer Reynaldo Santos Jr. for cyber libel. The court sentenced Ressa and Santos six months and one day up to six years in jail, but they were allowed to post bail pending an appeal. They were also ordered to jointly pay 200,000 pesos for moral damages and another 200,000 pesos for exemplary damages to the complainant. However, the court ruled that Rappler itself had no liability in the case. In a 37-page decision, the court found the prosecution's evidence sufficient, saying the accused didn't offer a scintilla of proof that they verified the crimes allegedly committed by businessman Wilfredo Keng. Keng's camp claimed they have pleaded several times for Rappler to publish a clarificatory article or at the very least, air his side of the story. Kang even set an appointment with Rappler to show a PDEA certificate as a proof that he is not involved in any criminal activities. Kaya nga siya napilitan magkaso eh. Kasi kahit na pinakita na niya lahat ng certification, hindi naman nila ito kinonsider. But Reza denied this. Neither the editor in charge of this nor I ever received any communication from them. Neither the head of investigative, that's Shai Hovilenya, yeah. who actually is in charge of this section, nor I ever received anything from them. The court also clarified that the guilty verdict is not a curtailment of the right to free speech. However, Reza's camp thinks otherwise. Well, definitely we, we don't agree with the decision. We will look at the judgment in its entirety, take a look at how the judge appreciated the evidence or failed to appreciate the evidence, and then uh, we will take it from there. But I, I, do, I do agree that the judge focused on that part, particularly the part where uh, the private complainant said that it was not, you know, it was not a, uh, a rappler did not do enough to, to, to correct the, the injury. So, but, you know, uh, of course, we, we don't agree with that. The complainant stemmed from a Rappler article dated May 29, 2012 that linked Kang to illegal activities including human trafficking and drug smuggling. The article was first published four months prior to the enactment of the Cyber Prevention Act. However, because of an update on February 19, 2014, the court held that the article was covered by the law as a republication was made. Rappler maintains, though, that this was not a republication, but a mere correction of a typographic error. Ressa was undeniably devastated with the decision, but she vows to continue to fight despite being under attack for the last four years. Sa mga Pilipino na nanonood po, hindi lang po ito tungkol sa Rappler, hindi lang po ito tungkol sa amin, tungkol po ito sa inyo. Because freedom of the press is the foundation of every single right you have as a Filipino citizen. If we can't do our jobs, then your rights will be lost. We will keep fighting. I think it's, this is a blow. It's a blow to us. But it's also not unexpected considering that we are going to stand up against any kinds of attacks against press freedom. Media organizations such as NUJP and FOCAP believe that the decision is a big blow to press freedom. Vice President Lenny Robredo said the conviction of Ressa sends a clear message for critics to keep quiet. On the other hand, the palace says the public should just respect the court's decision on the matter. Malacanya also insisted that President Duterte himself supports press freedom. Paulit-ulit na po sinabi ng presidente na ni minsan hindi po siya naghain ng kahit anong kasong libel labad sa kahit kaninong nabubuisit siyang mga perudista. Naniniwala po siya sa malayang uh, um, uh, pag-iisip at pananarita at ang paninindigan niya ang taong gobyerno hindi dapat um, 
um, onion skin. No? Meanwhile, Integrated Bar of the Philippines President Domingo Cayosa says Reza's fight is not yet over since they may still appeal the case to a higher court. Cayosa believes that press freedom cannot be used as a defense in this case, although he admitted that this may have a chilling effect on the practice of media. For News 5, Marlene Alcaide, we are One News. What's next for Rappler? Let's find out from Rappler Managing Editor Glenda Gloria. She joins us on the phone. Good evening, Ms. Gloria. Hello, good evening, Robbie. Good evening to everyone. Uh, uh, Glenda, very quickly, how is Maria Reza doing? How is she taking this? And equally important, how is the newsroom of Rappler? What's in store in the immediate days? Well, Robbie, we just finished a general assembly, of course, online with the entire Rappler team. And Maria is in high spirits. You know, you know her very well. I mean, she's always in a good mood and very gracious. And uh, we were prepared for this worst-case scenario. But on the other hand, we also understand the, that this is the mission that we have embraced. Mm. And therefore, uh, this will not be a blow to the, ki to blow to the kind of journalism that we will we have done and we continue to do. But obviously, the, the Rappler team is very sad. Uh, the reporters are, 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 are shocked because, of course, there was always this glimmer of hope mm. that we would be acquitted. But, of course, sadly, it did not happen today. Okay, now, Ms. Gloria, of course, government is making the case and insisting, as, as the litigant is, that this is a private affair. Mr. William Kang is, in fact, a private individual. He is a businessman. How do you make the argument that, no, this goes beyond being a private case? How do you make the case that this is about governments going after Rappler? You know, people forget that the story that we published in May 2012 was not about Kang but about the former Chief Justice Renato Corona, who was facing an impeachment trial. The story is all about the business connections of people uh, of Corona and the allies he had in the business community. There was an allegation that he was in fact being driven in a luxury car owned by various businessmen, including Kang. So Kang, unfortunately, the decision zeroed in on his private capacity but the story was really clearly a public interest case because it raised issues about precisely um, ethical concerns involving a chief justice and, and the private sectors who, of course, would have to face uh, cases and who has cases in the judiciary. So that, that's one. I think we could not, it cannot be separated, the fact that the story was really about the late chief justice. Um, and therefore, the public interest case there precisely is the implicit um, uh, relationship, alleged relationship between business and the judiciary. Yes, but it, it's very clear. The, the public interest argument is very clear from what you just said. But what I'd like to, to, to clarify is how do you make the connection between this promulgation, this decision, this uh, what you are saying is an attack on Raptor, an attack on press freedom, how do you take it beyond the interest and the arguments with Mr. King and to make a clear uh, connection that this is about the Duterte administration attacking Rappler and attacking press freedom? Oh, well, this is not only about Rappler. It is about journalists and everyone online now. The, the verdict is very clearly, um, it, it stipulates three things and, and two very important things that impact journalism and, and people online. First is that, whereas before, um, libel, the prescription for libel is only one year, now the judge is saying that the prescription is 12 years, meaning to say that if you, for example, publish a story today that a public official or a businessman, for that matter, deemed libelous, he can, like, it's like a shotgun to your head, right? So that for the coming 12 years in your lifetime as a journalist, then you could be accused of libel. Mm -hmm. There's that. Um, there is a value to the mm -hmm. fact that the prescription for the regular libel is only one year, precisely because you do not want libel to be used as a convenient tool of politicians, of public officials who want to evade accountability. Because the bigger question here 
is precisely press freedom. If you do not have a critical press that seeks accountability in government and in private in the private sector, then you do not have the kind of information that the public needs to make informed decisions, whether that is an election or on policy policies that the national government issues. Okay. Rappler Managing Editor Glenda Gloria, maraming salamat.